Hey, Joe Gilder here. Today we're going to talk about how to get fast when it comes to navigating your sessions in Studio One. I've been on sessions where the engineer is super slow and it can be kind of frustrating when I just want to play my part and it takes them forever to do the thing that they're trying to do. I want to help you become nice and snappy when it comes to Studio One, mainly because if I can make music more quickly, then that means I can make more music in the same amount of time, which means I go through the process quicker, which means I get better quicker, which means not only do I make more music, but I'm making better music. That's the heart behind this. So let's dive into Studio One. I want to show you some of the features that I use to help me get around the sessions quickly. One of the pieces of feedback I get from people when they watch me work is they think, man, he's fast. It's not because I'm trying to be fast. It's just I love efficiency. I want to get back to making music and all the stuff we do in between where we're making the music, those things I want to do as quickly as possible because it's not that they're not important, but it's because it, it's, not as, it's not as important to me as the actual music making part, which is one of the reasons why I fell for Studio One a decade ago was because it helped me be quicker so I could do more music and less tinkering with software. So here is, ironically, now we're going to tinker with software so I can show you how to do this stuff. All right, so here is a session. So First, real basic stuff. So one of the things I would encourage you to consider, especially if you're a Mac user, I have used the Apple trackpad for a really, really long time. So it's just it's just like the trackpad thing from a laptop just in a single device. So I can have it right here. I, I used it actually because using a traditional mouse hurts my wrist for some reason. Everyone in Nashville uses those things with the ball on it, the trackball. I don't like that. Uh, but this... I gave it a shot years ago, back when it was smaller and gray, and my wrist stopped hurting, and I discovered there's a lot of cool features here that help me do things like navigate sessions quickly. So um, the, the reason I show you that is because the first thing I want to show you is how to just simply do simple zooming. So if you do this, if you come down here to the bottom left-hand side of the screen and you adjust the size of your tracks, like the vertical zoom, that way you are doing it the slowest way humanly possible. Um, same if you come over here and you try to zoom in. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. So, sorry, forget that last part. Um, this is a very slow way to do it. It works, and it's helpful when you're just starting out to figure out how to change how things look. But that is not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to hold down Command on the Mac, it's Control on the PC, and then just scroll with the scroll wheel on your mouse. I'm assuming your mouse has a scroll wheel. So as I scroll up, I zoom in. As I scroll down, I zoom out. Okay? So that's the first thing is you, sometimes you want to see everything, but sometimes you want to get in there and see one specific thing. So that's zooming horizontal or vertically. How do we zoom horizontally? Uh, well, historically, one of the ways you do that is by clicking up here and dragging. So you come up here into the, the timeline here and you click and hold. And as you drag, you can move around left to right. But as you drag up and down, you can zoom in and out. This is pretty efficient, actually, uh, because it allows you to zoom in. It zooms in wherever you've dragged. So if I choose right here and I start dragging, it's going to zoom around that point that I have selected. So that feels really intuitive. However, one of the ways that I zoom in and out, there's a couple of ways. One is by using the pinch feature on the trackpad, which I know doesn't apply to everyone. But if I move the mouse into this area and I just pinch left and right like that, it zooms. So you'll see things zoom on my screen a lot. Chances are I'm doing the pinch thing. However, if you don't have the pinch thing and all you have is a scroll wheel on the mouse, if you hold down I uh, believe it's, I, don't, I haven't done it in so long. Okay, yeah. So if command, or I'm sorry, if command and scroll or control scroll on the PC do, does the, hor the vertical scroll, if you add shift to that, so hold down shift and command or shift and control and scroll, you're now s zooming in horizontally. So without having to do any extra controls, without having to click anything with my mouse, I'm able to do all the zooming that I want to do. So I can zoom in real close this way. And that's all with just holding down command and then adding shift or not, depending on if I want to go sideways or up and down. Okay, that's the first thing, zooming and scrolling. That's how you navigate. Another big piece is once you've zoomed in really far and you want to get back out and see everything, that's where this handy feature comes in. It's called Auto Zoom. It's a new feature in Studio One. I believe it was with version 6. Auto Zoom is delightful. I like it so much so that I've mapped it to the letter Z on my keyboard. So when I press Z, it toggles Auto Zoom full, which lets me essentially see everything in my session. So if I'm super zoomed in and tweaky and I say, okay, I've dealt with 
whatever it is I want to deal with. I just press Z on the keyboard and bam, we're back to the big overview. So we've kind of done a nice reset on everything. I can start navigating again. That is a super handy feature. I recommend using that because um, it's just one key press and you're back to here. So if you tend to get in the weeds like I do where you're trying to like look at one specific thing, when you're done, it's nice to be able to come back to the full view of the session. Okay, so now as far as like navigating the timeline, so if we hit play here, um, the playhead starts to play. And kind of the, the nor normal mode that I like to use probably I'd say 90% of the time or more when working in Studio One is when I stop playback, the playhead jumps back to where it was. So if I'm starting on bar 41 here, no matter how long I play, when I press space bar to stop playback, it's going to jump back to 41. Now, when you first open Studio One, your system might not do this. And that is because there is a feature called, if you come to Transport Options, it's called Return to Start on Stop. Or another place to see that is just right-clicking down here at the bottom of the screen on the Transport. Oop, not there. If you right-click here, it's also here. So uh, right here, Return to Start on Stop. Now, I've actually mapped this to Control-T so that I can toggle it on and off. But this allows me, if this is off, which is the way that Studio One, I think, comes by default. I'm not sure all that. But if I hit play here, and then I listen to two bars, and then I hit play again to stop, it stops exactly where I was. It behaves much like a tape machine, right? Hit play, I keep going, hit play to stop. This is a great feature, specifically when I'm doing, like when Gregor and I do critiques, as we're listening to a song and we want to pause the song, and then continue where we left off, we use this feature. So we turn off that return to start on stop feature. It's a, it's a mouthful, right? But what we're saying is return to start on stop means once I stop playback, it's going to return to where it started. That's the idea behind it. So for, I would say, for most people, you probably just leave it like this 100% of the time. It jumps back to where you were. That to me is the way I would probably choose to use it all the time. However... I gave you a reason why I use the other version. Uh, here's a big one. Sometimes you want to navigate, but you just want to jump back just a couple of bars. So I'm listening, I'm listening, and I want to go back three bars. I can do that really easily. How did I do that? Uh, it's with a keyboard shortcut that you have to set up. So come to your menu, go to keyboard shortcuts, and search for the word rewind. And the, the command we're looking for is called rewind bar. So all that means is when I use this command, it's going to rewind the playhead by one bar, one measure. And I've got this mapped to the left bracket. And if I, if I search for bar, no, forward, yeah. Forward bar is the other command. So by using the left and right brackets with these fingers, so that's the keys right next to the letter P on my keyboard, I can very easily navigate my session without having to use the mouse without having to find the exact spot and click it. That doesn't mean clicking with the mouse is bad. This is pretty quick, but so is this. But especially if it's playing back and I'm sitting here listening and I say, wait, what was that? It's nice to be able to just go pop it back a couple of measures. So something like this. So those are instances where maybe you would normally, if you wanted to hear how this section worked, you might set up a loop. That's fine. That's a couple of extra clicks to get that working. If you really just want to hear it a couple of times, just hitting that back bracket works really well for just saying, wait, what was that? And it goes back and forth. So that's an easy way to navigate within like a certain section of the song. Uh, I recommend setting that up and getting used to using it because it can be really handy. Also, just so you know, I've got the, there's the button to the right of those brackets. So I'm talking about the, I forget if it's forward slash or backslash, but if you look right here, right, uh, right here, this button right here, that is, I've got that mapped to my record button. So when I go to record, fast forward, record and fast forward and rewind are all right there. So I can have those three fingers right there. So I can go, if we're recording on a new track, for example, I can do something like hit record. And then I can say, hang on, and I can, I can stop record, go back, punch in, stop record, go back, record, punch in. I'm doing this all with just one hand and three fingers on those keys there. Uh, so that's pretty handy. Let me show you what that looks like on the keyboard shortcut. If uh, under transport, the command is record, I've got that set to whatever that is. Forward slash back, I never know. I think that's, 
I think that's backslash. I don't know. You can let me know in the comments, but we all know what we're talking about. Okay, so though that's navigating the playhead. Those are the main ways that I do it. One other way that's handy, and I don't do this as much because I'm kind of bad about placing markers, but if you have your marker track visible, which you have visible by going up here, clicking on this and choosing marker, that will show you by default your start and end playheads, which are handy, but you may want to have more playheads in there. So I use Shift Y to insert markers. So this might be course one. This is, and I can go forward and back by a bar. I can say this is verse one. And we can add in our different markers. So this might be. Actually, this is the chorus, and then like this is chorus two. This is the bridge. So we can add our markers in. They're just handy for kind of seeing where we are in the session, but there's another thing that I didn't realize they did for a couple of years, but it's really handy. So if I come up here to my keyboard shortcuts again, and I look for the word marker, if we scroll, we can see, aha, go to next marker and go to previous marker. So I've got these mapped to, this is a semicolon and apostrophe, which are the two keys to the right of the L key on my keyboard. So again, if we're talking, if this is my forward and back one bar, this is forward and back one marker. So here's what that looks like in reality. I keep unplugging my key keyboard. Um, sometimes you may want to navigate more than, more than just one measure. And by doing this, I can jump forward and back by markers. So you can set these wherever you want and it'll just go from one to the next. Now you can get crazy and have certain keyboard shortcuts for marker number one, marker number two. I don't go that far. I typically just use this when I remember to use it to jump between, okay, we're at the chorus. And now I wanna go, I wanna go back to the chorus. I'm gonna go back to the first chorus and I just hit the button. And it can even do it while playback is happening. It'll just continue to play from wherever I selected, which is pretty handy. Let's see, there was one more thing I wanted to show you. Okay, this is one I don't use, but it's worth, depending on your workflow and the kind of music that you make, it might be a really handy feature to use. So this one I believe lives underneath this wrench up here. And it's gonna take me just a second to find it because I don't use it as often, but I, I'm intrigued by it. So the first thing is cursor follows edit position. So if I have that selected, when I click on a a piece of audio, like a, an event like this, the cursor, meaning the playhead, will go to that piece. Specifically, it goes to the left-hand side of that. Um, for songs like this, where everything is just one big, long piece of audio, it's not super helpful because every time I click on a piece of audio, the playhead goes all the way back to the far left of that. But for like loop-based productions where everything is divided into a bunch of different sections, that can start to become kind of interesting. So if I click on this piece of audio and press play, that section starts playing. Same if I click here and press play, it does the same thing. So I don't use that a lot, but it's interesting to me, especially, again, if you do a lot of loop-based production, if you combine that with, um, oh, hang on, I know what it's called but I always forget where it lives. It's loop follows, maybe it's, maybe it's in here. It's something about where the loop actually follows the selection. Um, hold on, hold on just one second, I'll find it. Okay, I found it. It's actually down here in the transport, which is why I always forget about it. If you come down to the very bottom of your session and you right click on this transport where we found that return to start on stop, you'll see this, a loop follow selection setting. If we turn that on, then this loop up here, this little gray bar here will follow whatever we have selected. So as I click around, I'm now moving, because of those two settings, I'm moving where the playhead is and I'm also moving where the loop is. Now right now the loop is off. If I turn it on by using forward slash, which is next to the shift key, um, then the loop is on. So as I'm playing it, it's gonna loop that selection. And if I come here, it's gonna do the same thing. It, I have to stop playback and go back. But this I don't use a ton because like I said, I have big long chunks of audio. I'm not doing lots of loop based production. So if I click on this, for example, the loop goes the entire length of that audio file. That's not terribly useful for me. But if you can imagine a, a song that is built around one bar, four bar loops, as I click them, this becomes an interesting feature to have turned on. I'm gonna turn it back off so it doesn't confuse me later, but those are handy settings that don't work for my workflow, but they might work for yours. And I thought it would be worth um, 
showing you how that works. Now I got to turn that off. Cursor follows edit position. Okay, now we're good. All right, so hopefully, even just if you just in incorporate one of those into your workflow, I think you'll find yourself being a lot snappier when it comes to navigating Studio One. Hope that was helpful for you. I'll see you in the next one.